Hi, Dan here, Scooter Magazine. Uh, right, just a quick update on uh, a few things, what's going on at this end. Um, three things we'll cover in this video is one, um, why there haven't been any videos out for a while. Two, the new magazine's just dropped, so what's in that and how you can get hold of it. And then three, what videos I've got coming up in the near future. So I've had a bunch of messages um, inquiring from people you know, hey, we subscribe to the channel, we're enjoying your videos, but you haven't been putting anything out in the last few months. What, well, you know, can we expect any more? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, unfortunately, towards the end of last year, my wife got quite ill. And so with having four small children at home, doing homeschooling, one thing and another, and my wife being ill, um, we had to make some adjustments at home. And so that meant I couldn't spend time out in the shed um, and doing the videos and stuff like that. Um, but things are improving at the home situation, so I'm finding more time now. So I'm hopefully going to get back into the, doing a few more of the videos. So you should see some more of those soon. So apologies for not having put out any content recently, but I'm hoping that will now change as things progress through this year. That's that. So in terms of the magazine, the new March edition has just hit the streets today. Um, as ever in this, it's got the usual news and uh, column sections, a uh, variety of stunning feature scooters, an in-depth uh, tech analysis of the SIP 43 horsepower 306cc uh, engine. Um, Stan's Vespa T5 restoration continues. Um, it's got a, a stunning Vespa versus Lambretta nostalgia feature from uh, good old Stuart Owen. Um, Ron Daly's been good enough to put together a great um, Vespa carb and fuel systems tech overview. Um, we've got part two of the aftermarket tuning kit. So this is the second half of the Lambretta cylinder kits that are out on the market. Um, as part of that series that we're doing. And then of course, everything else that you usually get in the magazine plus the classic scooter section, which is now included. Um, I'll pop a link in the description. Um, if you can't get out to the news agents to get hold of this, or you're not a current subscriber, I'll pop a link in for subscription offers, but also we do single copy postage free to the door. So all you can have to do is go online, follow the link. You can buy a single copy for the cover price and we post it out free of charge. So that's out on the streets now. Um, just drop to the news agents, uh, go and get your copy or follow the link in the description below. The last thing that I'm going to update on this video is what is coming up in the future. So in the immediate future, I've got the TS1 engine that I've been building for myself to, to go in the street sleeper uh, into, the, um, into my LI. Um, I'm going to follow that build uh, in the garage. I've just got hold of the ignition. That I'm going to fit on that, the whole um, electronic ignition kit. So it's quite a nice piece of kit. A lot of people are using these and a lot of people are asking questions about these. So um, I'm going to do an in-depth tech overview of that, take a look at the ignition system on that. Um, I get quite a lot of questions on gearing also, which is um, weird, but um, it's, it's, it, it can be quite a simple thing just to give an answer, but a lot of people don't understand why I give the answers I do. So we're going to have a look at power, power curves, and gearing, and how the gaps between gearing affect that, dropping in and out of the power um, with a few illustrations. Perhaps might delve into also how wind resistance plays into that, and how cut downs versus full bodied scooters, different sizes of rider, and so on, can affect it also. Um, so, we're going to have the gearing um, coming up. And I also get asked, um, and I think it's because of we, we do. Um, uh, a legal side of things in the Kickstart column of the magazine, um, but I get a lot of asked a lot of questions on insurance. So I'm just trying to speak to a couple of individuals at insurance companies and line up a bit of a Q and A with them. Various things that sometimes trip scooterists up. I there was a story in the magazine not so long back where a guy got home from a rally. He got off his scooter, parked it on the driveway, gone in to take his kit off and get the key for the garage went in, put the kettle on, had a brew, came back out to get his scooter, which was parked on the driveway. It had been stolen in that brief period of time. His insurance policy had a clause in it which said, whenever your scooter is at home, it must be locked in your garage. And his wasn't, it was parked on the driveway. Which to all intents and purposes means if you wheel your scooter out into your driveway just to wash it, go inside, turn your back for a minute and it gets nicked. Depending on what's in the wording of your policy, it means you could be um, out of pocket. And that guy was. And there are a lot of clauses in policies that like that that people aren't quite aware of. So I'm going to have a, 
a bit of a one-to-one -one with a, a guy who runs a, a, a company who is au fait with all these aspects of insurance and scooter um, scooter insurance and see if we can get some just definitive answers on a few questions that frequently crop up. So that's about all for now. Apologies for not getting any content out recently. The new magazine's on the streets. Make sure you get a copy or follow the link below and we've got some great new content coming up soon so I'll be back out in the shed and uh, doing the usual with the spanners. See you, see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.